Well, hello. I will be doing a proper intro in a second. I just wanted to let you know that I'm about to finish my recording session for this episode. And it is 12.30 a.m. on the day it's supposed to be coming out. And I haven't even started editing yet. So... It's going to be tough to get this one out on time, but hopefully you'll see it at the normal time on the normal day. And I hope you do enjoy. As you can see behind me, there's a little bit of a spoiler of what's coming up. But watch the episode and you'll see exactly what we've done this week. And I hope you enjoy. Here it is. Now, if you watched last week's episode, you're going to know that I got some mushrooms. The cool thing about mushrooms is that you can milk them to get mushroom stew. Now... Most people know this, however, there's an extra thing that mushrooms can do, and that is making suspicious stew with some very cool effects. However, it's a little bit difficult to do. Let me explain. So here we have our mushrooms, and they are currently red. I know, fairly normal. However, to make suspicious stew, you need them to be brown, like a regular cow. Now, how do you do that? You might think you get your shears out and you cut the mushrooms off, but no, that turns it into a regular cow. What you need to do is, okay, what you need to do is get it struck by lightning, which turns it into a brown mushu. I'm not really used to the whole lightning rod thing. I have no idea how it works, but I'm going to make a lightning rod and I'm going to see if I can make one of these lovely mushrooms get struck by lightning. Now, anybody with half a brain knows that lightning strikes the tallest thing in the area. I know it's not quite true in Minecraft, but it's a good thing to follow. Now, this is ridiculous, and I'm not going to put a cow up at the top of that. What I will do is build a little cow house here, which is further up the hill than down there. So I'm going to build a small platform here for my lovely brown cows to live on. And do you know what? I'm going to make it out of pink wood, because pink wood is new and cool. Okay, my brownification machine is ready. I've got my lovely mushrooms, and I've got the lightning rod in the middle. Now we've just got to wait. For the heavens to open which might not be for a long time now i could wait around for a lightning storm or i could use this bad boy you may remember i picked this up in the last episode i've done a few modifications to it so now when i throw it that bad boy comes back Woo! also if i hit something with it there's a zombie here we go Hooah! i missed come back to me Hooah! Oh, that thing do be spicy though. Okay, so I think it needs to be raining for it to work. But basically, this thing's supposed to strike him with lightning. I wonder if I can hit that squid. Huah! 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 No, no, Kobe. There's some, some XD down there. I am very much liking this. This is a fun weapon. I've never ever had one of these before. I'd love to do an awesome trident fighting montage. I think it's going to happen because I don't have the replay mod. Also because I'm fairly bad. You know how when it rains in Minecraft it's really annoying and you just want to sleep it away? It seems to happen all the time, yet when I want it to rain, absolutely nothing. Bright blue skies. So I went FK for 0.23 seconds and would you look at that, it's raining. So, as I was trying to explain earlier, what happens when it's raining? And I've got this trident with channeling on it. Huh. Absolutely nothing happens. <laughs> Uh, it says on the wiki that it's got to be thunderstorms, and I guess this isn't quite a thunderstorm. How annoying. Well, I cannot get it to rain in the slightest, so what I'm going to have to do is build a shrine to the rain gods. I think here is the perfect place for it. One thing I've always liked in Minecraft is building fountains and things like that. I don't know why. Like, I, I have no interest in fountains in real life, but um, I don't know. It's just kind of pleasant to build... A little circle with some water in it, and then like a statue with water spouting out the top, something like that. I just think it's cool. <laughs> I forgot how insane this spoon is. So this is a decent area to make my nice little water fountain thing. Now I do have a central block here, so we can make a nice pattern coming out from the center. And I've always liked to do steps on the way in, so you can hop in and out as you please. So that's the basis done. Now I think I want to do a surround made of something. I hear the something block is a very, very nice looking block. So I did the border with the polished 
diorite and some deep slate just to give it that black and white look now to start building the bit in the middle so that's the basis done now i'm going to add some water i think i want a drop in there and we'll see what a drop on the top looks like uh, i do want it to protrude a touch there we go that's looking nicer right i guess i fill in the bottom and here we have it our shrine to the rain gods and now we pray for thunder and it will not come sacrificial pig i'm really loving how my cherry trees are slowly evolving the land around me into this cool pink paradise they look awesome don't you think i believe i have a suggestion to do which i probably should have done last week but didn't <laughs> uh last week was a mad one but this week i've got a little bit more time so this is a dedicated part of the world to Zaverxi. I think I've been pronouncing it Zaverxi, but uh, who knows <laughs> if I got that right or wrong. Drop a comment. I know you're watching. Hi, how you doing? Um, so there's a few comments to do here. So the first one is a village. Oh dear, village around the sinkhole. Now the sinkhole, what's being referred to is uh, this here which is where I blew this up a couple of weeks ago. And this is what we're going to be calling the sinkhole. The second suggestion is call the cat Tom, like in Tom and Jerry. And the third one is a cool treasure cave, which will be down in the far end of the sinkhole. Now, I'm not one for building off my island, but I think we can, we can stretch to do that. This map doesn't look updated. I'm sure there's more cherry blossoms than that. Yeah, there we go. Well, let's head down to the sinkhole. I'm going to grab some of that white wool and start planning some bits out. Oh, I should definitely fix that as well. I'll fix that first. It does seem that as I'm placing this dirt, it is fixing itself, which is very nice. There we go. The water is fixed on the way into the hole. The villager's here. He's coming to say what up. So what I want to do is I want to start with a big bridge. I want it to be a cool big arching bridge so that when you sail under it, it looks really cool. Then I suppose we're going to have a bunch of pathways. Looks like somebody's blown this area up. Really weird. And the pathways will lead all the way around the hole. I've made a uh, sort of layout of where I want everything to go. I'm just updating the map. So you can see there's a pathway that leads all the way around the edge. And I've got two bridges. One going along here and one going sort of diagonally. These will be made out of wood, brick, stone, whatever I fancy. I think I'm going to go for sort of a variety of designs. So some houses will be wood, some will be stone, some will be other things. <laughs> I don't know what else there is in this game. Um, and it's either do that or I can make them all sort of the same thing like a village would be. But I think if I do lots and lots of different designs, that would be cool. But this is the layout. I'll go and put the maps back up. We can see exactly how it's going to look from above. So there is the design layout. It does look fairly awful at the moment. So when we're going with the treasure cave, that's underneath this big square bit. So I've extended the path around here. And this is going to be like a town hall type thing. And maybe it'll have a shaft that goes down into the treasure cave once it is made. There's a few more houses under the trees that you can't quite see. But yeah, we'll see how it looks after I have finished it. I think I'm going to start with the bridges and then we'll make each house individually on its own because the bridges are going to sort of involve themselves with the paths and the, the bits of wood. I think we should keep that theme, but all of the transport. And then we'll go on to the houses. So I've done the first bridge, which spans where the explosion goes. I thought I'd give it some kind of cool support structure and make it go down and up a bit like a, like a bridge would, I guess. I'm not too happy with it. It looks very basic, but I think that's fine. It kind of keeps in fitting with the rest of the path. It's sort of just basic wooden shapes. So I think that that is okay. I do want to see what it looks like from down the ravine. It, it looks quite basic, actually, but that's okay. That is the second bridge built. I'm sure there's going to be some white wool under this thing somewhere. As you can see, when I say it's a bit minimalistic, I mean it. <laughs> I mean it. It's going to fit in with the paths. It's going to be very basic and very cool. Also, it's kind of a good excuse because building in diagonals is really difficult. Because I'd like to put fences and walls and stuff, but none of them would join up properly. So that would be really annoying. I just have this last bridge to build here. 
but I might leave this until I've built these two buildings, because the idea is this bridge goes between the buildings. But we'll see. We'll see where we go. So, I've got the first house in place, and the second one over there. It's a very simple design. Just some wood, some wood, some stone. There's a little bit up there. Got a couple of floors. The whole thing reaches all the way up the hill, and it sort of follows the flow of the hill. I found it really interesting sort of working with the flow of the hill rather than doing a completely flat structure. It's kind of cool. Obviously, the inside has no furnishing, but you could have a bed, chests, furnaces, etc. Uh, I've got this small under the stairsy bit that you can see out into the hole. That's pretty cool. And then up here, it just follows the hill up and out with a small balcony here. Again, just to look out. We then have the third bridge, which I said I was going to make. I might update it a little bit, but this is the basic idea done. And then this bit is just sort of a grand entrance hall. It's not anything in particular. However, off to the right here, I've dug the square out. This is going to be sort of the mine, which will go down. And directly below here will be the treasure cave. I'm not sure when we'll get to the treasure cave. It may not be this episode, but we'll see how far we get along with this village today. I also made a cool path, which goes from the first bridge all the way back to the other lands bridge. Um, oh, we're in the other lands. That's kind of spooky, hey? I've added in a couple more buildings. So I've got the deep slate sort of vibes with the big windows. I like that. I've got this one here as well, which is like a taller version, which goes down into a cool bubble down there. I've been playing with the, the pink vibe, and I'm not too sure on whether I like it. <laughs> Obviously, it's unfurnished. Um, I think the other house might look a bit better. I've got this sort of stone brick vibe. I still need to do the floor in here. Yeah, it's a bit bare. And then I've made a sort of undergroundy house, so it's, it's only at waist level from outside. But you head inside, and there's a bit more room in here. It's a bit nicer. Hold it. As you may have noticed, I've put ladders everywhere coming out of the hole. So, uh, but when I do stupid things like that, I can easily get back up. I really wish I had the replay mod so I could fast build these in a time lapse. That would be really cool. But, uh, alas, I cannot get it going at the moment. So, I've done everything apart from this one plot here. Absolutely everything. We'll do a quick run round and we will fill you in on exactly what we've done. We'll start with the bridge. So, here we have the ravine which comes up to the bridge. We'll go clockwise around the big hole. First, we've got this tall structure, which is the sort of deep, dark, deep slate kind of vibe with a small balcony up at the top. And then down below, there's just like a bubble that you can see all the water in. Next up, we have a pink house made from the new cherry wood. The door is down here, rather roomy on the inside. And it's a very, very low ceiling structure as it's dug into the ground. That's very cool. We have a wool house. I I haven't done any insides on any of the houses. And I'm not sure if I will, as I don't really have a need to. But it's a cool idea just to look at. I was going for an extremely varied design for this whole village. So some of the stuff doesn't look very good and other stuff I think looks better. So we've got the very first house I did, which I showed you earlier on. Which is the one that sort of sprawls up the hill and has the bridge. There's sort of a castle-y style house here, which is, I think, pretty nice. It's got some lovely, what do they call it, contouring? Some nice, like, texturing. It's got some nice texture. It's missing a glass block. Oh, yeah, I can fix that now. Oh, come on. <laughs> there we go, glass block. Then we have another. This was um, meant to be like a dark oak kind of house, but I... Got carried away with other blocks, but it's got dark oak in here somewhere, so that's not too bad. This is sort of a bamboo base onto a wooden house with a lot of lighting in here. Oh, there's more stuff that's missing. I didn't finish this one. I don't want that there. There we go. That's now finished. And that's now finished. Perfect. We then have this big sweeping path that goes all the way around. And here we have the mining area, which we're definitely going to dig in the next episode, as I do not have time now. I like the front of this house. It's kind of modern with a, a very simple block layout with some texture on the front. This is just the other side of the bridge. I think I showed you this earlier, so might cut this bit out from the video. Who knows? We then have our other structure, which uh, got creeper bond. So that's why this house is missing. 
but it's meant to look like that. I'll fix that before tomorrow, maybe. I don't know. And this goes down into this sort of big viewing area. You can see the other one over there. And this also has a bit under the stairs, just a storage room of sorts under there. We won't talk about this house. If you know, you know. We have another pink house. This one looks awful, but it's, uh, it's, it's here. We then have, this was like my villager style house. It ended up looking a bit more like a witch hut, I guess, with the, with the legs out. Another castle-y style house. This one's a little bit smaller than the other one and has a different roof. The rainbow house, which is just a rainbow. The andesite and diorite house, which again has a lovely window viewing out and is missing the roof. There we go. A simple yet elegant solution. And the last house going all the way around is the last bamboo house. This is all made of bamboo and cherry. I like the cool little supports we've got here and there. The different styles of bamboo. And then up at the top, every single window is openable, which is lovely to let in that lovely ocean breeze. And by ocean, obviously I mean big circle lake. That's where we're going to do the treasure cave later on. But again, that'll be in the next episode. Also, I've done a path going back. I know I did mention this before, but I just want to kind of show it off again. I think it looks really nice. So that is everything I've done. The one thing I do want to do before we end this episode is update the map. Just to see what it looks like from the sky, really. I'm going to need a name for it as well. If you want to name the village, drop an idea down in the comments. And I'll pick my favourite one. And there it is. All the extras we've added in. Looking kind of cool. Now, I know I haven't done the faces in a while. It's, it's because I don't want to dedicate a whole episode to it. And when I come to the end of a recording session, I just don't have time. But... It will be updated in the future. All you got to do is drop your name in the comment. I'm still logging every single person that puts their name down in the comments. So please put your Minecraft Java name in the comments. If you don't have a Java account, hop in the Discord and send me a picture of your Minecraft face. I'm logging all of them and I will do them in a future episode. And you'll be sitting here right next to my bed. I believe that is everything for today. So I hope you have enjoyed. If you haven't enjoyed, check out another video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.